Okay, welcome back to this next part in my new Earth to Mars series that I'm putting together. And in this video, I'm picking up the quick save file that I uh, saved from part two. So I've already got TransX set up and configured for the trip out to Mars. We can kind of review what we did there. If you look at our encounter, shows that we have a minimum altitude of 234 kilometers as we get out to Mars and taking into account of course that that will change and we have everything set up here with regards to our eject orientation so we're going to have a heading of about 122 degrees as we take off which is quite convenient because the in, the runway at Wide Awake International is basically facing the direction that we're going to take off. But before we can do that, we have a couple of things to consider. And the first one is life support. It The default XR2 only has 14 days worth of liquid oxygen. And we've already determined that it's going to take us at least, uh, you know, the better part of a year to get to Mars. So first thing we need to do is bring up the uh, payload section and I'm going to go ahead and turn the APU on and open these payload doors even though it's not actually necessary but it will uh, but it'll be easier to see exactly what's happening. APU offline. Okay, once we have the payload doors open, we can bring up the payload editor and we'll select the module that we need, which is going to be XR2 payload locks. And we can put that in either, either slot two or three, it doesn't matter. So we'll just put it in two. And I would feel a little more comfortable making this trip because it is quite a ways if we had some more fuel. So I'm also going to select some XR2 payload main fuel and put that in slot 3. And then we're, we'll hit done. Now I'll turn the APU back on and close the doors. Okay, now let's go and take a look down here at the, at the uh, regular panel. And we can see we've got 420 days worth of uh, liquid oxygen. So that gives us plenty of oxygen to get to Mars. And hopefully we now have enough main fuel as well. Now before we get going, there are a couple of things here that we can set up. Let me press Control F4 bring up an external MFD, select a line plane, and something I like to keep an eye on as I'm ascending to orbit, I want to know how accurate my uh, flight path is up through the atmosphere in terms of staying in alignment with uh, my with my relative inclination for you know crossing the correct node to get to Mars and the right way to do that is if you press ELS over here it'll bring up this dialog box and it wants to know the ecliptic, incl ecliptic inclination and the longitude of the ascending node and that information is given to us right here in Transex so I'm going to type that in 28.42 space uh, 100 and then we hit enter and what this allows me to do is uh, as I'm going up through the atmosphere I can keep an eye on my rate and my relative inclination to try to keep that at a minimum number you know per the usual way that we do that when we're going to rendezvous with the 
international space station or go to the moon or do whatever so that parts all that part should all be pretty similar to what we're used to okay so now what I'm going to do is get this show on the road gonna head out to uh, gonna head to orbit now I personally like to record all my videos from start to finish without any types of uh, breaks or interruptions so if you don't particularly care to watch the ride to orbit then go ahead and skip ahead to the next video uh, because what I'll do here is I'll take off and then as soon as I reach Miko uh, main engine cutoff I'll stop this video and then I'll start the next video uh, right after that point so if you want to watch the ride to orbit great if not you can go ahead and skip to the next video so here we go turn on the APU make sure surface controls are on Pitch on. and just do a last bit of sanity checking here I always feel like I'm forgetting something bring up orbit MFD I always like to check my controls before I go. Okay, that's working. Alright. Goodbye, Earth. I'll see you in a few years. Why do I always feel like I'm forgetting something? I don't know. Warning. On external cooling offline. Could have turned off external cooling for one thing. 100 knots. V1. Okay, I did not get the rotate call out, so I'm going to throttle back a little bit and pitch up. Wheels up. Gear up. Raise the landing gear. Gear up and locked. And we'll go back to full throttle. And now immediately I'm going to start keeping an eye on the aligned plane MFD over there to try to get my relative inclination as low as possible. I wish Orbit would, uh, or, yeah, or Orbiter, I wish it would switch the color of the HUD automatically based on, you know, based on the background color. Because it's so hard to see the green when you're on the ground during the day. But then that orange doesn't show up very well once you start getting up into the atmosphere. It's just, I find myself having to constantly switch colors. Okay, oops, I should have been leveling out by now. Wasn't paying attention. Gonna be a little late on my scram ascent. Okay, the uh, extra fuel module that I brought with me is now empty. So note to self, once I get up into orbit, I'll ditch that module. Mock 3. 
There's Mach 3, so we'll open the scram doors. And now we will go full scram and reduce the main engines. And I do hope that the scram engines aren't as loud as they used to be. I did some work with the audio file to try to reduce the sound of the uh, scram engines. Just a bunch of usual stuff here. Keeping an eye on the relative inclination, watching the hull temperature, all the usual stuff. And we can briefly take a look outside. Trying to get my meters per second for my vertical speed down to a fairly low number. I don't really want to climb too much at this point, so I want those scram engines to work. Uh, I want those scram engines to give me as much benefit as they can. Because all the scram engine fuel that you have left over after you get to orbit is a total waste. So you want to burn through all your scram fuel while going to orbit. Watch my hull temperature, it's creeping up there a bit. The trick to not burning up with the XR2 is to anticipate the rise of temperature in the hull and stay ahead of it. If you're reacting to the hull temperature, you know, when it says it's overheating, then by then it's usually too late and you'll burn up. I'm banking a little bit to the right because I can see that my relative inclination is getting a little bit of benefit with some bank. Warning, scram fuel low. Okay, I've almost burned through the scram fuel. Okay, scram fuel depleted. Close the scram doors, back to the main 
back to the main engine. Okay, my relative inclination, that positional indicator is starting to swing around to center. So now I want to bank left so that I'm closer left to the center 70. position. And now I'll pitch up a little bit because I do want to get up to at least uh, you know, 75, 80 kilometers, something like that. Got about 2,000 meters a second to go. To reach orbital velocity. Inflammation. APU fuel 90%. Mock twenty one. Okay, we're very close to orbital velocity. Mock twenty two. Start bringing back the main throttle a little bit. I find that I can get a better, better orbit if I'm not going quite so fast here at the end. So my goal here is I want a periapsis of about zero. Mock twenty six. Uh, we'll go with that. It's got the apoapsis at the target of about 200 kilometers, and the periapsis is still below the surface, so that means I can uh, th jettison my spent fuel module, and it will go around and burn up in the atmosphere. It's basically the same thing the space shuttle, the space shuttle does. Okay, so... Set the joystick over to the side, I'm done with it. And let me just get a couple things configured here, and then I will go to, uh, I'm going to end this video and pick it up in the next part. So we'll go with that. I'm going to say everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here and pick it up in the next part. Actually, let me pause it first. Okay, now I've got the simulator paused, so now I will end the video.